I chatted with Mike Pereira. He's got the Fox corporate account, and he's buying the first beer after our last speaker, Tony Carante, gets off the stage. So let's get Mike. Mike Pereira, corporate account. Fox, very generous of Fox. <laughs> My topic today is judgment. I have been officiating for 30 years, and I've never been to a clinic or a summit that has a topic of judgment. We've had discussions of position, mechanics, penalty enforcement, uh, how to handle hot coaches, but I've never seen a topic of judgment. And in order to have good judgment, I had to think, well, what have I done right, and why do I have good judgment? And I came to the conclusion, the secret to having good judgment is seeing the action before it happens. Um, being able to see what is about to happen before it happens will make it all slow down. When you guys are driving, the next time you're on the freeway, do this safely, maybe as a passenger, but when you're doing 65 miles an hour that way, and the cars are coming at you at 65 miles an hour, pick out a car 50 yards in front of you, 25, 50 yards, and watch them go by. And it's going to seem very fast. And please do this, no matter what sport it is you officiate. Judgment is the one thing that everyone in this room, volleyball, swimming, wrestling, hockey, basketball, fast pitch softball, baseball, basketball, football, so one thing everyone in this room, we're compensated for. We're compensated to have good judgment. So pick out that car 20, 50 yards in front of you and watch him go by. And then pick one out 200 yards in front of you and watch it go by. It will seem much slower, but they both were doing 65 miles an hour. And that's the sensation we need to get to on our chosen field um, or basketball court or whatever, ball diamond. We have to get the sensation that it occurred slower. So the secrets, the, the first topic, second topic, that would have been up there first. <laughs> Determine the threat early. I've got five topics, five plays. Determine the threat early will make it slow down. And every play has a threat. Um, Bob Delaney showed you guys a basketball clip that was Kenny Maurer on the baseline as the lead official in the low post. Well, Kenny was focused in there early before the ball was coming in to see that offensive push off underneath. He, Kenny was there early because he, that's where the action was going to take place. The first play we're going to have will be a, a catch at the sideline and pause it right now. Okay. I'm, a, I'm at the bottom of the screen. I'm at the bottom of the screen. The uh, quarterback scrambled. Once that ball gets released, once the ball gets released, I can tell by the trajectory and the speed where it's going. If it was low and across the middle, the ground would be the threat. This is high into the outside. The threat's going to be the out of bounds line. First threat would be offensive pass interference because usually OPI happens first and then possibly defensive pass interference. Threat one is OPI, DPI. They don't occur. So the real concern I have is the boundary. So once that ball's in the air, I'm on the line of scrimmage, I pivot, and I'm looking straight down at the out-of-bounds line. That is the threat I'm looking for, and my eyes need to be there a second or a second and a half before the ball gets there, because then it's going to slow down. So we'll let it roll. Boom, boom, two feet. But if you followed that ball and were with the ball and then got it, you, you, you would, it, would be, it would be too fast. It would be like that car going by at 50 yards, not 200 yards. But if you were studying that ground before the ball ever got there, it would be much simpler. The, third, or the fourth threat is did he maintain control of the ball? Did he bobble it or did it come loose when he hit the ground? That did not occur. That's a good catch. Um, boom, boom. It happens quick, but if you were there studying that piece of turf, that piece of real estate, it didn't happen that fast. Run the game. Don't let the game run you. you. You can change. You shouldn't change. What you did in the beginning of the game, what you did in a preseason game or early in the season or in the Super Bowl late in the game, don't change what we're in charge of. We have a set of rules we have to deal with. Run the game. Don't let the game run you. This will be a play... Um, Uh, can you wheel that back just to the start? I want to cover something. Okay, there you go. Fra pause. Okay, this is a five-person set. I don't need you to teach NFL mechanics, but there's no back. There's five guys going out for a pass. I'm down at the bottom where I was in the other one. I have that big tight end, number 88, in there, the second receiver in. 
when you first, before the play, if you see the play before it happens, I've got a matchup here of a big athletic fast receiver, number 88, up against a linebacker. That's a matchup in the NBA a team would want to go after. This is a matchup that quarterback. If you really look at it, this quarterback looks left, faking left the whole way. He knows where he's going before this play snaps. That's a matchup he wants. He's going to make a living on that matchup. Okay, let her roll. The linebacker's out of position. It's a bad matchup, and he gets there early and rakes the arm. If you're there early studying it before the ball gets there, you'll see it. But if you get there late like you're tracking with the ball, it will seem too fast and you, it will seem like it was on time. Here's the real truth of what happened in this game. I call pass interference on this play and one of my fellow officials comes in and says, Jeff, what do you have? I, I don't have anything there. And this was the first time I got nervous in this game. And this is pretty late in the game to get nervous. But I got pass interference, two yard line, going in and one of my fellow officials is saying, what do you got? I don't have anything. So we have to be able to replay the play in our head and then and be able to regurgitate it in essence, play it again and see it in your own eyes. And then luckily one of my fellow third official came over and said, Jeff, stay with it, there's something there. So in the real world, the discussion as a crew, as teammates, as your fellow officials that are out there, you work together and uh, trust your instincts and stay with it. Uh, relax and let the play present itself. This is a run. The run is going to be coming at you. Uh, the first thing I have, I'm at the pylon. This is actually the game winner. You're at the pylon. You're studying, looking for holding. Once they clear that, there's three threats. Get back to the threats. The first threat, did the ball get in the end zone? Was his knee down? And two, did it, the one thing I could have really done to screw this up is put air in the whistle and go up touchdown when the ball was loose. So this is a high pressure point in the game. If you're under pressure, you can do things faster. If you're a public speaker and you're nervous, you'll talk faster. Under pressure, it's easy to go up with a touchdown. He did have possession of the ball, we'll see it. But the three threats, did the ball cross the goal line, was it in his control, and was his knee down before the ball crossed? This is the game winner. Um, well, I'm looking for holding, looking for holding, nothing there, nothing there. Ball across, knee down. I probably still shouldn't have come in that fast when I look at it again. <laughs> Pylon cam. This game had 82 cameras on it. A normal game has about 12. Trust your instincts. There's some stuff that will happen in a sport that happens so quickly, I don't know if you can physically or truthfully see it or officiate it, but, and this is, I've, I watch a lot of film. I watch probably 15 hours of film every week. Probably 12 of it's NFL film and three hours of it is watching film for Bill Carolla and working with the Big Ten and all that. Um, if you watch film a lot, sometimes you're, you eventually will determine, you can feel stuff that you can't even see, but you'll know. Trust your instincts. This play will roll and freeze it at the snap. Film shoots at 32 frames a second. Our eyes, hold it, our eyes are constant. So film shoots at 32 frames a second. Our eyes are constant. I believe I have a competitive advantage over film. That sounds like a very arrogant thing to say, but the right defensive end here will roll the snap by one to two frames. And that's a huge competitive advantage. This is a big play. This is the game tie in PAT. And he's going to roll this snap because there's a lot on the line here. And, and, and they eventually do get the two points. But if they didn't punch the ball in on the two points, this gets to be a high profile call. Can you really see this and be super confident on the field? You know this is defense offsides, or do you feel it? But trust your instincts. Use your God given abilities and trust your instincts. And we'll roll it. And, and, the easy, and that doesn't look that bad right there. And he barely gets that in. You can't just fall in love like, I got to get the number of the guy. You have to finish officiating the play. He'll roll that thing just a schmidge. And this will get in by not much more than a schmidge. Okay, here's the final play. Officiate on your toes, not your heels. Um, there's going to come a time we all work with partners. We're all out there together. We're out there trying to do the best job we can but you have to be aware of what your partners out there can see and what they cannot see. 
um, on this play, I knew my three deep guys, they could not see. There was a pile up of humanity, and the three deep guys, back judge, field judge, side judge, they had no physical ability to see this. Um, and you have to be able to be confident in your ability and assert yourself. So if we roll the film, remember what I said, determine the threat early. The threat here, first of all, is their pass interference. No, there's no pass interference, offensive, defense. So now that that's gone, now the threat is the ground. A lot of people would have followed the ball playing plinko, knee, ankle, shin, all the way down. You don't follow the ball. What's important here was the ground. Once the ball was touched, the important thing was the ground. Did the ball hit the ground? So I'm looking at the ground, just like I was looking at the out-of-bounds line. I was, I'm looking at this ground, not the ball, and bam, he's got it. I don't, don't follow the ball. The ball's not going to help you. Right now, the only critical thing is the ground. I got a little lucky. He caught that ball horizontal. If he would have caught it vertical, whether the nose touched the ground or not, that would have made that a lot harder call. Um, for some of the older officials in here, Gino Steratore calls me Mendy Rudolph when I get a little animated, when I start coming in with my signals. And uh, uh, Jerry Markbright knows Mendy Rudolph, I know that. A great NBA basketball official from the 60s and 70s in, in the NBA. Um, and and you got to see how my three deep guys don't know anything about that play. You got to help your buddies because someday your buddies are going to be there to help you. Um, and that was 10 catch signals, which might have been a couple too many, but I was a little animated at the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three nights ago I was having some food and I had a fortune cookie and it said talents that are not shared are not talents and I'd just like to say thank you for allowing me to share my talents with you guys